right, so welcome back to my channel. Okay, so hello everyone. So this is the first time that I am appearing on one of my videos. I hope everyone will ha have a great, great time. And today we will be discussing a very important topic and I hope and I really hope that you will all be learning a lot today. So again, I just want to greet everyone a pleasant day a pleasant morning afternoon evening whatever time you are watching this video right now so hello so i hope everyone will really be enjoying your time and your opportunity to learn today and if some of you are actually asking what will be our discussion all about for this morning for this afternoon or for this evening so i am very excited to actually discuss to you one of the things that we will be discussing for today which is all about your syphilis and your gonorrhea. So these are actually emerging sexually transmitted infections going around not just here in the Philippines but worldwide. And this is actually one of the increasing um, one of the increasing cases of public health burden not only here in our country but also worldwide. So I hope that you are excited. And so let's dig in for today. So. Talking more about your syphilis and gonorrhea, what we have is other emerging community-acquired sexually transmitted diseases or infections. The first time that I did a video about this, I discussed all about your human immunodeficiency virus or your HIV that is the causative agent of your AIDS or your acquired immune deficiency syndrome. And for today, we will be discussing your syphilis and your gonorrhea. So let's dig into the first part, which is your syphilis. So what is syphilis all about? First, it is a sexually transmitted disease caused by a bacteria known as your treponema pallidum. So your treponema pallidum is actually from, um, it's actually a spirochete. And this is actually, um, the um, a bacteria that is tightly coiled and what you can see on the on your picture on the right as you can see this is tightly coiled the this spirochetes are the one that causes your treponema pallidum but to add upon to add things about that it's not only your treponema pallidum that is under the genus treponema so we have a lot of treponema species as well and your treponema pallidum is just one but for the sake of this discussion i will only be discussing your treponema pallidum the causative agent of your syphilis so let's move on so maybe some of you are asking how are these types of um, bacteria are being transmitted from one person to the other so these are some of the transmission for your syphilis. So it can actually occur by direct contact with the syphilis sore during sexual intercourse. Either this sore are found in your vagina, in your oral cavity, or in your anal, um, anal area. So when talking about your transmission, so later on I'll be showing you some pictures of your sores. So those sores are actually very important those sores that you will be seeing eventually those are tiny lesions whether in the vagina even in the um in the penis of your uh, male patient in the oral cavity and also in the anal area so those things are um can actually be the one that can be transmitting your bacteria so from direct contact whether so imagine how the direct contact would be in those area yes that is how it is being transmitted direct contact to those area would lead to um infection aside from that you also have a mother to baby or your vertical transmission so you all know that um during delivery during delivery this bacteria can be transmitted to the baby during delivery so as you can see i don't know if you are actually seeing this now these are actually examples of your sores. So on your left, this one, on your left, you can actually see that this is a mouth sores, okay? This is different from the oral thrush or the uh, mouth sores or the other infections that you are seeing because of herpes, because that is not a bacteria, that is for the virus, herpes. So here, you can actually see that there are syphilitic sores 
in your oral cavity. And aside from that, this one, you can see this in the um, in the sexual organ of your male. And as you can see, this source here are the one that contains your bacteria. And if, upon direct contact with this source, you can actually contract the bacteria as well and be transmitted to you. And when it comes to syphilis, we have actually different stages of your syphilis. So the different stages of syphilis are your primary syphilis, your secondary syphilis, your latent syphilis, and eventually your tertiary syphilis. So let's first go to your primary syphilis. So your primary syphilis, what happens is that your spirochetes, so we're talking about your Streponema pallidum here, multiply locally at the site of your N3. So take, for example, um, from an infected person, the direct contact happened in your in your mouth. So where um, the spirochete um, originally have a contact with your body, that is the first site where it will start to multiply and eventually propagate in that particular area of your body. Aside from that, after multiplying in that particular site, the ulcers now will start to appear on the site of N3. As you can see, um, when I first showed you the, the appearance of your spirochete of your treponema pallidum, they actually look like your um, they actually look like worms that are tightly coiled. Okay, it like it's like your spring. So those bacteria can actually penetrate the site or penetrate the site of entry. And eventually, upon multiplying in that area, they will start now to produce or to appear ulcers on that area. So after that, the ulcers may appear within two to 10 weeks after infection. So more likely, this is the incubation period, okay? This is the incubation period whereby the moment of contact from the first time that your ulcer appears will range from two to 10 weeks. And this can actually spread to nearby lymph nodes and reach your bloodstream, okay? And reach your bloodstream. So one primary or one key thing when it comes to your primary syphilis is that spirochetes starts to multiply in this period. Spirochetes start to multiply in this period and your spirochete are actually, um, your spirochete are already starting to um, be spreading in, within your bloodstream by entering your lymph nodes. So, so during that time, so during these times, you can actually see that your um, ulcers will start to appear and afterwards when it's time now for the primary to be finished, it will now be proceeding to the secondary syphilitic stage. So the secondary stage, this is now where um, a red maculopopular rash will appear anywhere in the body, including in the hands and in the feet. Okay, remember a while back, we were discussing that during the primary stage of syphilis, the spirochete started to invade your lymph node and it will now be appearing into your um, bloodstream. This is now the reason why in secondary syphilis stage, what you can see are actually maculopopular rash that can appear anywhere in your body. So this time now, it becomes a systemic infection. It becomes a systemic infection. And afterwards, what happens is that it will now start to have the appearance of a moist, pale papules and the anoged genital region in the axilla and even in the mouth. So you can see the appearance now of not just ulcers, but papules of your um, syphilis. So these are actually manifestation of, it is already on the secondary stage. Aside from that, in the secondary stage, it also includes symptoms like painless rash that's not normally itchy, a flat, warty-looking growth in the vulva or around the anus. So this is, if take for example, you actually have contracted it and it actually had a direct contact in the um, female genital and also in the anal area. Aside from that, there will also be white patches on the tongue, cheeks, and the roof of the mouth. So as you can see, these things now will start to appear and aside from that, there will be patchy hair loss as well. 
So as you can see in the secondary in the secondary stage of your syphilis, there are actually a lot more symptoms that will start to appear. And like in your primary, you also only have your ulcer on the on the point of entry or the entry site of the bacteria. But here now, say, similar to what happened in the secondary, it's now on your bloodstream. So you're you will be having painless rash, a warty looking growth in the vulva or in your anal area and white patches um, within your tongue, your cheeks, in your mouth. So that is now where the secondary stage of syphilis will appear. So having said that now, aside from the secondary stage, eventually you will also be developing your, um, um, this, and so before I move on, let me show to you some examples. These are now the white patches that appears on your oral cavity and this is actually the maculopopular rash that actually appear anywhere that can appear anywhere in your body ranging from your your face from your hands your foot and even in your torso so that is now your your secondary what happens now in your latent in your latent stage this is um the stage where there is no visible sign or symptoms of your syphilis if treatment is stopped you can actually continue to have syphilis for years. So this is the part where um, the symptoms are actually not visible. There are no signs and symptoms that are appearing, confirming or saying that you have syphilis. But the thing here is that you still have your you still have your infection. So during the latent during the latent period, okay, during the latent infection, what you have is actually just simply nothing you cannot actually um, observe any signs and symptoms so during this time if you stop your treatment you can actually continue to still have your syphilis for years so what do i mean by that so isn't it most of the time upon the disappearance of the symptoms or the, any signs and symptoms of that particular disease we tend to assume that it is already treated or, or that it's already um it's al already gone. But in the case of your syphilis, we have a latent stage. And this is very crucial because if you stop your treatment in this particular air in this particular period, the particular syphilis or your, your syphilis infection can still persist eventually in the coming years. So what happens here now, what happens in your latent stage is that when you stop your treatment on this particular on this particular moment what will happen next is now your what your tertiary stage your tertiary stage now is characterized by the development of your granulomatous lesions in the skin in your bones and even now in your liver so what happened here now is that um for isn't it when you are in the latent stage it can actually last for decades and you can actually appear symptomless at that time. But in the tertiary stage now, serious stage, and it will now cause more complications within your body. So you can have a degenerative changes in the nervous system or even cardiovascular lesion. So not only does you will start to show um, tertiary, your granulomatous lesions in the skin, bones, and your liver, you can also be expecting a degenerative changes within your nervous system and your cardiovascular lesion. Okay, so I'll explain more of this um, stages eventually when we go to your diagnosis. So these are actually your tertiary. So as you can see, um, you're, you're starting to show lesions everywhere in your body. So aside from that, aside from the primary, the secondary, and the latent, and of course the tertiary stages of syphilis, we also have this thing called your congenital syphilis. Again, going back to the transmission, your syphilis can be transmitted from mother to baby. So a pregnant woman can transmit the treponema pallidum to fetus through the placenta in the 10th or 15th week of gestation. So imagine that not only can it be transmitted by direct contact, like for example, you have a direct contact during delivery, not only that, your congenital syphilis can also be transmitted 
through your placenta on the 10th and 15th week of gestation. So congenital syphilis, um, if, the, if the baby is born alive, can develop signs of congenital syphilis in the childhood. And these are interstitial keratitis. You have your Hutchinson's tit. Well, I will be showing to you later on. You ha also have your subtle nose. You have your periostitis. And this is how they look like. This is your keratitis. Okay, this is your keratitis. So I'll just go back. So these are the four um, congenital syphilis um, signs that you will be seeing if the baby is born alive, having now your congenital syphilis. So it, they can have your interstitial keratitis, and this is your Hutchinson's teeth. So as you can see, um, it actually looks like um, fangs of a vampire, but that is actually due to congenital syphilis. Aside from that, you also have here your subtle nose. So this is how your subtle nose looks like, okay? That is how your subtle nose look like. So that is all about now your congenital syphilis. So what are the different diagnoses that we do for us to be able to detect the presence of your syphilis? And as medical technologists, as medical practitioners, this is one thing that is very much important to us. So how do we diagnose whether it is syphilis or not? And again, it actually will be varying from primary, secondary, latent, and even your tertiary Syphilis. Of course, now you know the signs and symptoms that they have, but eventually you want in the laboratory, you actually want to find out whether or not that particular lesion or other um, appear uh, lesions in the skin are actually of treponema, pallidum, or other um, diseases or other causative agents that actually have similar symptoms. So how do we diagnose that? So let's dig into that. So the diagnosis First, that we need to discuss is, of course, the specimen of choice. The specimen of choice are, of course, your tissue fluid. So tissue fluid, when I say tissue fluid, this is where the lesion is found. So what you want is actually to col collect tissue fluid coming from that particular area. So if you have your ulcer, you want to collect that tissue fluid coming from that ulcer or coming from that lesion or coming from that white patch. And aside from that, you can also have that in your serum. Again, going back to the primary and secondary, once your treponema pallidum invades your, your lymph nodes, it will now be found in your bloodstream. Ergo, you can actually already find that in your serum and perform serological testing. Okay, so after this, after now that we know what are the specimen of choice that we want, we, the first thing that we can do is your dark field microscopy. We can also do your immunofluorescence, your serological testing, and eventually um, diagnosing now what particular in, um, syphili your syphilis that is um, present in your, in your patient. So this is actually an example of your dark field microscopy. So take for example, okay? So take for example, you have your, your, you have your, ulcer and what you did is actually to collect a particular to collect a particular um sample from that and you can actually view that under your dark your dark field microscopy your dark field microscopy oppo as opposed to your as opposed to your um as opposed to your to your light microscopy in your light microscope there you use your light but here it is actually just plain black black or dark and then you will start to actually have uh, a specialized light and you will be putting there the specimen and you will be viewing it under the microscope and as you can see this is actually your this actually the one that you can see here this is already your treponema pallidum so you can actually do the dark field microscopy and it is very much effective the dark field microscopy is very much effective during the primary stage okay during the primary stage of infection again because um because um during this time you can actually um you can actually detect it in the particular area point okay where it actually um appeared so in the primary syphilis what we actually do the diagnosis that we usually do are your is your dark field microscopy i hope you will be writing it down so in the diagnosis of your 
um, primary syphilis infection, the one that we actually do is your, or the one that we do, or the one that um, the diagnosis, the diagnostic procedure that we do is your dark field microscopy. So, in the, the um, aside from that, you can actually also do your um, non your non lesion te treponema test or your treponemal specific test. So these are now other serological tests that you can do again upon the appearance of your um, treponema pallidum in your bloodstream. You can also find it in your you can also find it in your your serum so you can perform take for example you have your your rpr you have your 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 rpr and other tests as well so that is for that particular stage okay that is for that particular stage aside from that okay you can also have this one and this is actually your um, immunofluorescence test, okay? Immunofluorescence test. And it, this is how it happens. So imagine that your treponema pallidum is your antigen, okay? That is your antigen. And you have an antibody, a primary antibody directed against that treponema pallidum. The one that you're actually seeing there that are fluorescing are actually your treponema pallidum. Those are your, spy those are your spirochete, the one that you see there. But how does it happen? How does it actually happen? The first thing that they do is actually to develop a primary antibody and they will be um, attaching there a fluorochrome. A fluorochrome is the one that will fluoresce upon the attachment of your antibody to your antigen, okay? Upon the, uh, the, uh, upon the um, attachment of your primary antibody to your treponema pallidum. As you can see, the fluorochrome are located in the secondary antibody. So this is actually an antibody directed against your primary antibody. So after that happens, after your um, after your your primary antibody was able to actually your to, was able to to attach to your treponema pallidum, it will now we will now be applying your secondary antibody with your fluorochrome. And eventually, when it fluoresces, that would mean that that is a positive, that is a positive, um, a positive results. Okay. So afterwards, we also have here other diagnostic um, examinations. Okay, like your serological testing. So we have your VDRL, your RPR, your TP, PA, your TPHA, your MHA, TP, your FTA, ABS. So these are actually serological testing. The first thing that we did here are actually uh, this one is um, also this one is your immunofluorescence. This one is your dark field microscopy, and these things are your serological testing. Okay, these things are your serological testing. And in the serological testing, again, I'll go back to your latent syphilis. It is important to distinguish um, between early or stage latent syphilis to avoid relapse to secondary syphilis or recurrent infectivity. As I was mentioning, um, as, as I was mentioning a while back, okay, as was um, I was mentioning a while back, your latent syphilis can persist and eventually come un unknown because you don't have your signs and symptoms. It's symptomless in short, but you can actually do your serological testing to detect it, okay? You can actually do your serological testing to detect it because again, if it was not, um, if it's not detected, it can involve um, your neurosyphilis. Okay, your neurosyphilis, whereby there is already a central nervous system involvement there. Okay, so aside from that, so we have your VDRL, so that your VDRL is also known as your venereal disease research laboratory test. You have your RPR, the one I was mentioning a while back, your rapid plasma reagent test. You have your treponema pallidum particle agglutination, treponema pallidum hemagglutination, your micro hemagglutination T pallidum. And you also have your fluorescent treponemal antibody absorbed. So these are the usual, um, these are the usual um, diagnostic um, diagnostic procedures that we do for us to be able to detect it. Okay. So again, it is very important for us to actually 
um, identify these particular diseases because you have to properly identify on which stage they are already in. And aside from that, you have to differentiate whether or not that particular um, ulcer or that particular lesions are actually of your treponema pallidum. So let's go now to other to the treatment prevention and control. So for control measure, it will depend upon on the prompt and adequate treatment of all discovered cases. Aside from that, a follow-up on source of infection and of course, protected sexual intercourse. So as you can see, one of the primary um, transmission or primary mode of transmission for your treponema pallidum is direct contact to your direct contact to your lesion. So it has to ha have, um, it has to be prevented. So aside from that, going back to number two, follow up on source of infection and of course, prompt and adequate treatment of all, dis all discovered cases. Why prompt and why adequate? First and foremost, um, you don't want it to be progressing from primary to the secondary and eventually to your tertiary where it will now start to involve your cardiovascular and your central nervous system. Aside from that, it's very important to also have an adequate treatment even after the, the um, even after the disappearance of signs and symptoms, because again, we have your, um, we also have your, your, um, your latent stage of your syphilis. Okay, and of course, the drug of choice for your treponema pallidum is your penicillin. Okay, your penicillin. So, aside, um, that is your 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 penicillin. So. Um, I will be cutting this um, video. I will be cutting it into into two parts. So what we discussed for today is your um, syphilis. And later on, when we go back, we will be discussing your gonorrhea. Okay? Your gonorrhea. So if you have any questions, if you have any clarifications that you want to make, please feel free to please to comment down below. And I will be much excited to answer your question. So again, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you did learn something new today. So again, this is Jomar Adams. And again, this is Jomar Adams. And I hope that you will also um, hit the like button. Okay, hit the like button. Also would um, share this to your classmate that, hey, I already posted a new video. And please do subscribe to my channel. So thank you so much. So thank you so much for um Thank you so much and I hope that you will have a great day ahead of you. So thank you and have a great day. All right. Bye.